Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I'm going to be talking about books that I'm going to recommend for the uh, books a cover with a spooky cover for middle grade May. And so this is my second prompt and so there was an abundance of spooky uh, covers especially for like the horror uh, ones for middle grade <laughs> but I did find some that I thought could be spooky that are in some like not the horror in case um, but like I said with this prompt uh, spooky is you know kind of up to you what you think is going to be a spooky cover the inside of the book doesn't have to necessarily be spooky so there could be like a dark woods on it but maybe it's some kind of adventure and it's not really spooky inside but the cover kind of looks spooky so, you know, just kind of take that as it is. And so I'm going to start recommending some for, like, the horror uh, genre for middle grade in case there are some horror lovers like me out there. First one I have, of course, is Small Spaces by Kathleen Arden. Most people, I think, by now know all about this series. It's very popular on BookTube. And the cover, I mean, it's kind of spooky with that purpley color in the background and the smiling man scarecrow there on the side so I misplaced my actual book I do not know what I've done with it it's probably packed up somewhere <laughs> but I would also say that any of the books in this series has kind of a spooky cover this one maybe not quite as much as the other ones but I do know that the fourth book, if you're that far in, definitely has a spooky cover with that clown on the front. So I would recommend any of the books in that series. But this is about 11-year-old uh, Ollie who has suffered a tragic loss and she finds solace in books. And so one day she happens upon this like crazed woman by a lake and she's threatening to throw this book in the lake. And so she doesn't really think much about it. She just acts. She grabs the book out of the lady's hand. Not going to let her throw a book into the lake. As she begins reading the slender volume, Ollie discovers a chilling story about a girl named Beth. The two brothers who both loved her and a particular deal made with the smiling man. A sinister specter who grants your most tightly held wishes, but only for an ultimate price. Ollie is captivated by the tales until her school trip the next day to Smoke Hollows, a local farm with a haunting history all of its own, then stumbles upon the graves of the very people that she's reading about. Could it be that the story about the smiling man is true? Ollie doesn't have to too long to think about the answer to that. On the way home, the school bus breaks down, sending their teacher back to the farm for help, but the strange bus driver has some advice for the kids left in his care. Best get moving. At nightfall, they'll come look, coming, be coming for the rest of you. Nightfall is indeed fast descending when Ollie's previously broken digital watch, a keepsake reminder of better times, begins a startling countdown and delivers a terrifying message run. So, yeah. So, Ollie and two of her classmates... If I'm trying to remember their names, Coco and Brian, I think, I think, um, they are trying to figure out what is going on and trying to get things done and rescue the rest of their uh, classmates that are on the bus. And yeah, I do believe that you need to read these in order to really get everything. This is definitely not a series that you can read out of order. They each have a different thing, but they follow the same people, so... And it has the smiling man is in, like, all of them, kind of, so... The next one I have is, um, Hide and Seeker by Daka Herman. And this one definitely has a spooky cover, even for me, I think it's kind of a spooky cover. And it says, um... I went up the hill, the hill was muddy, stomped my toe and made it bloody. Shall I wash it? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of that's kind of like a, a spooky little intro right there. It says Justin knows that something is wrong with his best friend Z went his, with his best friend Z, who went missing for a year and now he's back. He was 
different. Nobody knows what happened to him, and Z's welcome home party, Justin and the neighborhood crew play hide-and-seek, but it goes wrong. Very wrong. One by one, everyone who plays the game disappears. Pulled into a world of nightmares come to life. Justin and his family, or and his friends, realize this horrible place is where Z has been trapped. All they can do now is hide from the seeker. And, yeah, it was kind of spooky. You know, for middle grade, I thought it was kind of spooky. And, I mean, the cover is definitely spooky. And I thought it was just different because, I mean, it's about a game of hide-and-seek and the seeker is somebody that you do not want to have find you. <laughs> so, it was pretty good. The next one I have is Ghost Girl by Ali Malenico. Z Puckett loves ghost stories. She just never expected to be a living one. It all started with dark and stormy night. When the sky is clear, everything is different. People are missing. There's a creepy new principal who seems to know everything about their darkest dreams. And Z is seeing frightening things. Large, scary dogs that talk and maybe even a ghost. When she tells her classmates only her best friend Elijah believes her worst, mean girl Nellie gives Z a cruel name of Ghost Girl. But whatever the storm washes up isn't going away, and everyone, most selfish wishes are starting to come true. So, Z and her friend Elijah, and eventually that nasty girl Nellie, ends up having to try to figure out what is going on and to save the people of her town because some bad things are happening to them. And it's definitely got a creepy cover. It's got some creepy inside, too. I think if you're not, like, a super big into, like, horror or anything like that, that it does have some creepy things in it. And, yeah, it's, I, I really like this. I need to get to another book from this author because I know she has another book out that's in middle grade. I just haven't got to it yet. Another great and spooky cover is Mine by Delilah S. Dawson. She also has another book that I have read called Camp Scare, which has a pretty spooky cover on it, too. But for this video, I'm just going to talk about mine. And this is about Lily Horn, who is a drama queen. She is help, help her rise to star at a school play, but it also lands her in trouble. Her parents warn her that Florida has to be different. It's a fresh start, no theatrics, but this time the drama is coming for her. The Horn's new house is awful. The pool is slime. The docks is rotten. The swamp's creepy. Creeps closer every day, but for worst of all, the house isn't empty. It's packed full of trash, memories, and Lily begins to fear that the ghost of the girl who lived there before. Begins to fear the ghost of the girl who lived there before. And nobody believes her because she is very dramatic that there is something after her, that there is a ghost in the house, that it's not a nice ghost. It leaves her things like the letters that say mine on things and is really tormenting her. But because she's so dramatic and with the things that happened at the previous place where they stayed, her parents just don't believe her. And so she's got to try to figure out what it is that this ghost wants so bad and give it to her so that she'll leave her alone. And yeah, it's it's a hoarder house, and so yeah, they're having to clean this whole thing out, so there is just a bunch of junk and everything in there. So that in its own self is, is kind of creepy, but yeah, to have a ghost actually, you know, wanting something too, is a little bit creepy too. And I thought, I think she uh, does really well with creepy settings and creepy books. I have to mention my favorite book. I know you guys have heard of this, so I won't say too much about it, but this is Whispering Pines by Heidi Lang and Katie Barkowski. It's a series, the Whispering Pines series. I read three of them. I think there's going to be four, and I can't wait for the fourth one to come out. But this is about uh, Caden and Ray, and Ray moves to Whispering Pines, where she's trying to... Her mother's trying to get her away from things that have happened into a more normal place, but there is nothing normal about Whispering Pines because she gets there and finds out that a lot of strange things happen there and, like, kids going missing all the time and they're coming back without eyes and it's just really creepy and there's it has to do with this green, uh, go green place. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but, yeah, it's a place 
that's nearby and uh, yeah she ends up having to kind of infiltrate that place to try to figure out some things that are going on they have to battle some pretty creepy things here's the second one it's definitely got a creepy cover as well it's got some kind of creepy bug on there so if you don't like bugs too much this one might make you squeamish but yeah, and even the third one if you've read the first two and you want to use the third one the third one the cover's still pretty creepy on it too and so yeah love this series so i'm always going to be recommending that one no matter what <laughs> and then here's another uh lindsey curry book that i have called uh what lives in the woods and I figured, you know, this is lightly creepy, but to some people it might be creepy, so I thought I would throw it up here just to show you that it doesn't have to be horribly spooky like the, some of the ones that I were showing you. It can be lightly spooky. And, you know, spooky, what is more spooky than woods, right? So this one is about Jenny Andrews who wants, uh, wants nothing but to relax for her summer and attend a writing shop, but her father surprises them with a family a month-long trip to Michigan her plans change for the worse especially because they aren't staying in a normal hotel they'll be living and restoring the centuries-old Woodmore Manor when they arrive Jenny is immediately spooked by a creepy house and the rumors of what lives in the surrounding woods legends say the forest is inhabited by prowling creatures with glowing eyes that prey on campers who are never seen again so yeah she feels like the woods is calling her she knows that there's something creepy going on there and she's going to have to kind of figure out what is going on and yeah you know like most lindsey curry books they're pretty creepy and also i'm going to have to mention here another lindsey curry book because it has a spooky cover too and like i said i think before in my other video that most of Lindsay Curry's books could fit in the spooky category. So we have The Girl in White by Lindsay Curry. And this is about, um, she's about Molly. And she is kind of like Sweet Molly. She's like the legendary ghost there. And they, every year, they like recreate like this uh, Molly th uh, thing. Um, it's like a festival or whatever. And Mallory hasn't quite adapted to her life in the new town of Eastport yet. Maybe it's because everyone everyone is a set obsessed with keeping the town's reputation as one of the most haunted places to visit. And thanks to the nightmare she's been having since she arrived, Mallory is having a hard time sleeping, combined with the unsettling sensation of being watched and losing chunks of time. She worries that maybe the ghost stories she's been quick to dismiss may actually be real. And she has to figure out what it is that Molly wants with her and a new friend that she makes in town. I can't remember his name, but he's been having the same problems, been having these like nightmares and things like that. And so they just got to figure out how to appease the girl in white. And yeah, it's got a pretty creepy cover. This one would also work for the other prompt that I have that I haven't talked about yet, which is um, a light source on the cover. So the next one I have is a mystery, and I put this here as kind of a loosely, like a light, spooky cover, and I needed something for mystery, and it's pretty much the only, like, actual mystery mystery that I have read that has um, a uh, spooky kind of cover. And it's not real spooky, but I think some people may think it's spooky. And that's Midnight at the Barclay Hotel by Fleur Bradley. This one is about a group of kids, and I can't remember the main character's name, but uh, he loves all things like haunted, haunted houses and haunted things, and he just he's really into haunted and ghosts and things like that. And he's heard all about the Barclay Hotel, and when he sees that his mother has an invitation to go to the Barclay Hotel, he like pretty much begs her like to go because he wants to go with her. But what he doesn't know is that his mother, along with several others, are being sent these invitations to come to the Barclay Hotel because they are suspects in a murder of the main, of the owner of the Barclay Hotel. And so once he gets there and figures this out, he's like, oh, my mother didn't do this. So he's going to have to try to figure out what's going on in 
the hotel. It is rumored that there is a ghost in the hotel, and him, along with two other kids, uh, kind of go and try to figure out this mystery and try to solve, you know, who actually committed the crime or whatever. So, and it's cute. I liked it. It's my favorite one that I've read from Flirty Bradley so far, and so I, I highly recommend this one. It's a lot of fun. And so the next ones that I have are kind of fall into the fantasy, but are kind of kind of spooky too, like horror. So, but I wanted to have some like fantasy types, but I've I've learned that a lot of the the ones that I like are that are kind of fantasy based are still kind of spooky. Not all of them. There's a couple here, or at least one. <laughs> that is actual fantasy that has kind of a spooky cover and so i have um the jumbies by tracy baptiste and this is the first book in the jumbie series i think it's a trilogy and this one uh is about corin lemaire and she claims that she isn't afraid of anything not scorpions not the boys who tease her and certainly not jumbies they've just tricksters made up by parents to frighten their children one then one night, Corinne chases an agoti all the way into the forbidden forest, and the shining yellow eyes follow her to the edge of the trees. They couldn't belong to Jumbies, or could they? When Corinne spots a beautiful stranger at the market the very next day, she knows something extraordinary is about to happen. When uh, the same beauty, called Severin, turns up at Corinne's house, a danger is in the air. Seren uh, plans to claim the entire island for the Jumbies. Corin must call on her courage and her friends and learn to use ancient magic she didn't know she possessed to stop Severin and save her island home. Again, this is a series that I've read the first book of and I haven't read the rest and I need to. And this one will fit really well with um, Elizabeth from Solstein Inc.'s uh, prompts because it is um, about mythology and a different culture and I know that's what her prompts are kind of surrounding and yeah it's definitely got a spooky cover got the woods got the little eyeballs and um, I put it in the fantasy because fantasy is before horror on Goodreads on like what people have been putting it as so but it also fits for like adventure too it's on here and this one is one that I haven't read in a long time and I'm going to have to reread this one for sure because I would like to finish the series out and this one is uh, A Path Begins by J.A. White and it is the Thickety the first book in the, the Thickety series and I remember uh, thinking that it was okay and it's been how long has it been since I read this one let's see yeah 2016 so yeah I'm gonna to have to reread but it's a dark, forbidden forest, vicious beasts, deadly plants, an evil spell book, secrets, mysteries, witches, both good and bad. Welcome to the world of Thickety. And so, I mean, that's got, like, all kinds of things going for it. If you're interested in those kind of things, then you might enjoy this book. This is A Path Begins is a thrilling start to a new middle grade fantasy series about a girl, a mysterious forest, and a book of untold magical powers. Kara and her brother, Taff, are shunned by their village because their mother was a witch. The villagers believe nothing is more evil than magic, except for what lurks in the nearby thickety. But when Kara enters the Forbidden Forest, she discovers a strange book, a grimoire, that might have belonged to her mother. The events she then sets into motion are both awe-inspiring and terrifying. And, like I said, it's been a while since I've read it. I don't really remember anything about it, so I'm going to have to reread it. And I just know that I had read it and I did like it. And so I thought maybe somebody else that hasn't heard of it might like it. I also have another one by J.A. White that I have read quite recently. Like, I think last year. And that is one that's probably more popular with this author and seen because there is a Netflix adaptation. And that is Night Books by J.A. White. This is about a boy is imprisoned by a witch and must tell a new scary story each night stay alive. Alex's original hair-raising tales are the only things keeping the witch not not just happy, but soon he'll run out of pages to read from and be trapped forever. He's loved scary stories his whole life, and he knows 
Most don't have to a happily ever after. Now that Alex is trapped in a true terrifying tale, he's desperate for a different ending and a way out of this twisted place. And so, yeah, so he's got to tell this witch all these stories, and while he's there, he is trying to figure out a way out. He meets another, I think a girl there. Yeah, even though it was last year, I still can't remember everything. And so, yeah, he's trying to get out, and I need to read the next, the newest one. I think it came out last year called Grave Books, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it came out last year, so I need to get to that one. It has a spooky cover, too, so I could use that for a spooky cover for myself. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I thought it kind of had a little bit of a spooky cover um, with the keyhole and all that kind of stuff. It looked kind of spooky. Okay, so another one I have is um, The Last Fallen Star by Gracie Kim. This one is a true fantasy, no spookies. It's, myth it's got a mythology, and it's adventure, magic, all that kind of good stuff. You can tell by the cover. This is not extremely spooky, but I do think those like evil looking little eyes up at the top could make it kind of spooky to some people. And uh, I read this one. I enjoyed it. Again, I need to fin continue on with the series. <laughs> and this is about uh, Riley O, who can't wait to see her sister be initiated into the Gom clan, a powerful lineage of Korean healing witches their family has belonged to for generations. Her sister Hattie will earn her G bracelet and finally be able to cast spells without adult supervision. Although Riley is desperate to follow in her sister's footsteps, there's no way she's going to be able to because she is adopted, so she is not actually of their blood, so she doesn't have the magic that they have. But when some things go wrong, and uh, Hattie gets this idea about how to maybe share her magic with her sister. Things don't go right. And so th uh, then uh, Riley and some other kids are going to have to uh, kind of go on this like little mission and get some things from, I think, some goddess, the god realm. Yeah, they have to go to the god realm or something. It's, it's been a little bit. And... Um, have to get some things to uh, help out what they kind of screwed up. And so if you like um, fantasy middle grade books, then you will probably enjoy this one. Okay, so the last two that I have to talk about, and sorry this has been kind of long, but like I said, I had so many books. And this one is going for adventure, kind of, but you know, it could uh, probably go for maybe like a fantasy and things like that too. But it's The Last Kids on Earth by Max Brailer. And, of course, it is a series. And I think pretty much all of the books might have kind of a spooky type. This is number three. And see, the third one has kind of, you know, spooky. I mean, I don't know what that thing is, but it's kind of scary. And so these are kind of like lightly spooky covers. The same with, like, the first one. And this is about a monster apocalypse that hit town. And average 13-year-old Jack Sullivan has been living in his treehouse which he is armed to the teeth with catapults, moats, and not to mention video games and endless supply of Oreos and Mountain Dew scavenged from abandoned stores. Uh, Jack's alone is, Jack alone is no match for the horde of zombie and winged wretches and vine thingies, and especially not the eerie, intelligent monster known as the Blarg. <laughs> and this is, it's kind of, it's humor too, so like if you're looking for something that's going to be kind of fun, it also has fun illustrations and stuff like that in it and everything. So it's a very quick, very easy reads and everything. And so, yeah, I'm currently on the third one. I meant to get to this one in March, and I didn't, so I am going to do that one in May. Okay, so the last one I have is Mouse Heart by Lisa Fielder. And I put this one up here because it just shows you that there's all different kinds of covers that can be kind of spooky. The cat on this cover is spooky to me. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Is looking at those mice like, I want to eat them. <laughs> and this is about Hopper. And he's not. he was just an ordinary uh, pet store mouse until he finally gets to escape. His sister is uh, goes missing in the escape attempt. And uh, he ends up in down in the transit tunnels in Atlantis. It's a glorious utopian rat civilization. But all is not as it seems. 
though Hooper is treated as a royal guest. He's missing his sibling, and Atlanta is constantly threatened by the rebels who wish to bring the city to its knees, and there are cats everywhere in Atlanta. Cats that leave the civilization unharmed, and no one can seem to, to answer why. Yeah, but you find out why. Soon... Hooper is caught in the crosshairs of a colossal battle, one that crosses generations of species. As the classes raise, Hooper learns terrifying, extraordinary secrets, deadly secrets about Atlanta, painful secrets about his friends. And so this is about one powerful secret, and one powerful secret about his destiny. And it's definitely another series that I need to continue with. I read this one, I believe, last year, I think. Yeah, I read this one last year, so I do need to continue on with it to find out what happens to uh, Hopper and all his friends. And so there you have it. That's all the books that I have to recommend to you that have spooky covers of some sort. Like, there is a lot of spooky covers out there. A lot that I haven't read that I saw that I was like, oh, these look so good. I was adding to my TBR as I was looking at uh, books on Goodreads that I had read and everything so if you have any recommendations for spooky covers please list them down below and also if you have a book uh, similar to like what I said in the other video if you have a book that's in a different genre that's not like horror mystery um, things like that that you think has a spooky cover on it that would fit into mysterious category feel free to recommend it and everything that's fine and so I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!